And I knew about the knife, but I fetched it. And next time you come talking to me in the press conference, I'm going to slap you so you respect me, because that's who we are. And if you put, get, get even lay a finger, man, I'm going to knock you out without gloves. After breaking his neck in a high-speed automobile accident in 1991, the Pasmanian devil, Vinny Pazienza, was told not only would he never fight again, but he'd be lucky if the rest of his life weren't confined to a wheelchair. Dr. Carter said to me, and he said, son, I'm sorry to say you're not gonna box again. But Paz was built different. Weeks after his accident, he built a home gym and began rebuilding his body in a way that completely baffled physiotherapists. Paz, still with a brace around his neck, underwent a brutal training regimen that not only saw him make a recovery in his legs and spine, but be able to once again compete in the sport that he had dedicated his entire life to. The world, the junior middleweight champion of the world. Everyone thought he was crazy, but there was another man outside himself who believed in the comeback, the legendary former Mike Tyson trainer, Kevin Rooney. I can't name anybody else, you know, that I know that works like this. And I mean, I think that Vinny is the hardest worker in boxing. Despite the fact he was clearly one of the best coaches in the sport, with the finest teachings to offer of the true custom auto schooling, Rooney had been left in the cold since his break with Tyson in 1988. But he saw something special in Paz, a work rate and determination that inspired him to once again mold a champion in a way that even the great custom auto himself would approve. Straight right by Paz, putting on a show. You know, considering all that I've been through, you know, once again, I'm happy to come out with this win. When I broke my neck, I came back. I've lost fights, I've came back. I won two world titles. Within a year of the accident, Paz was back on the mat, hunting for the title that had been taken away after his injury. He looked exceptionally quick with lightning footwork, blistering combinations, and an unrelenting engine that was a credit to his hard work in the gym. The comeback was going well, but Paz was yet to face a credible puncher that could really put his frail neck to the test. And that's when the 100-fight veteran and former hard-punching global icon entered the fray, the hands of stone, Roberto Duran. By the time the 90s came around, Duran was no longer the monster that could destroy top competition as he did in his prime, but he was still a very crafty fighter. Slick and powerful, Duran was still putting guys half his age to sleep on a regular basis. Oh, he's wide open, Duran now. Connecting upstairs and out of nowhere, Sean Fitzgerald is down. From 92 to 94, he had strung together seven consecutive victories, which curated perfectly for the USA Network to produce a big money fight between himself and Vinny Pazienza. I know he's coming to fight dirty. I know he's going to come and try to use dirty, dirty tactics in his fights. I think he's going to scare me. Nobody scares Roberto Duran inside the ring. You know, 43 years old, I don't know how he still feels like it. You know, I, I don't understand where his drive comes from because I just turned 32. I'm getting sick of this crap. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't understand it. But, you know, I tip my hat to him with that. I just don't like him as a person. You know, he's like, he's aggravating me. Duran entered this fight full of confidence, with an immense disdain for Paz, branding him a blatant drug cheat due to his saucy physique and relentless aggressive fighting style. BLTV picks up the action for round two. Vinny Pazienza out of his corner for round number two against Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran. Duran feels that uh, he has control of his emotions in the ring. He says, I can fight in different ways. He won't surprise me. Pazienza was fortunate to have what appeared to be a legitimate knockdown brushed off as a slip at the end of the second round, something that definitely made the tension rise as the bout continued. Roberto Duran. No, I, I don't think the, the, the force of the punch put Pazienza. Oh, now Roberto Duran trying to body Pazienza. There he is in close, working the uppercuts. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the elements earlier. Oh. <laughs> See these shots? There's a good right hand from Pazienza. Holding on, Duran in the closing seconds of the third. against the ropes. 
Roberto walking right through Pazienza. Pazienza headhunted against right Duran. He stayed on the inside. He quarreled with fighters. He moved up to the super middleweight division. In the ring, a right hand that has stopped 64 victims tonight against Pazienza. After being manhandled for the majority of the contest, Duran dropped Paz with a right-hand counter, to which the younger man responded with fire to let him know he wasn't hurt. Paz got under Duran's skin with some showboating during the midway point, which appeared to make Roberto lose his famed crafty edge, as he went on to almost charge Paz down without any real game plan, playing right into the hands of Paz's flurry and move boxing style. 1967 at the age of 15, Roberto Duran, 12 successful oh, well, titles of oh, Don't respect him. Throw that right hand any chance you get. Every chance you get, let that right hand go. Kevin Rooney saw Duran tiring and losing his way in the fight, so he ordered Vinny to start showing less respect and force the issue. Throw the right four, says Kevin Rooney. And that's where Paz needs to go. Your right hand, and you step over to your right. Three years ago, at the age of 40, against a journeyman, Duran said, oh, straight right again. Whether it was Duran just showing his age or Paz's game plan coming to fruition, the championship rounds were a complete mismatch as Vinny potshotted, showboated, and all around played with the former legend as he cruised to a unanimous decision victory. Duran seemed to be the only person in the world who thought he had won the fight, and he took things a step further by insulting Vinny's boxing style, calling him an idiot pumped on steroids who just runs around the ring. That struck a nerve with Vinny, who demanded a rematch to truly finish off the old legend for good. This this will be like round 13. Um, the key to this fight is, I know he can't hurt me, you know? He cannot hurt me. So knowing that, um, I'm going to box when I want to box, but I'm not... I'm going to get in the space, you know, I'm going to be right there in the space. A lot of the flurries he threw were in the later rounds in the fight, you know, but he, he can't crack an egg, he can't punch, you know, a lot of that flurry he used in the later part of the fight is because I only trained four and a half weeks for that first fight, so the last four or five rounds, you know, I need a little bit more conditioning, but that's the reason I conditioned myself for nine weeks of this fight. So, so if I don't get him the first six, I'll knock him out the last six. Six months after their first fight, in January 1995, Duran had his chance of redemption as the two squared off for round 13 at the convention hall in Atlantic City. And of course, known for the great pressure. He didn't like to beat his opponents. He liked to destroy them. And now he knows how he really has to pick his spots, try to set up the right hand. He's looking for Pazienza for the first time in his career. Oh, a big left hand. And Duran, it would look to be wobbled here in the opening seconds. A fighter like Roberto Duran go for an encore. Dangerous against a, oh, a speedster like Pazienza. 7-2, bang, bang, 2, 2-1. Two, two, Rooney's instructions were even more precise this time around. However, Paz was emotionally involved in the battle, and he started treating Duran in a similar fashion to the closing stages of their first fight to try and get in his head. Here's the speed of Vinny Pazienza. And the antics of Pazienza and Duran jumps right on him. Yeah, look at these punches that miss from Roberto. All over the place is Pazienza. Pazienza in the trenches in this fight. Yes. He wants to stand and slug. Speed factor in this fight is a big factor. Good combination. Pazienza again scores and then moves. It's the mission in the boxing game. That's why these guys are still going strong. Pazienza carrying that left hand low. Moving in. Good combination from Roberto. Oh, oh, Vinny is hurt. Good right hand from that. Duran. Well, it doesn't go. Oh, that's why. Right. Although the Duran 
began boxing at 118 pounds at the Bantamweight back in 1967. Duran faded. Oh. Duran weighed in. Oh, oh, again, the left. In and out. Now you see him, now you don't. Pazienza in control here in round number five. Oh, wow. How much different this fight is. Roberto Duran has slowed to a walk. By the midway point, Duran looked entirely out of ideas as Paz flexed his youth with some movement and showmanship. Pazienza still on the toes. Again, gets in, gets out. Of energy from Pazienza. Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran has been stopped just twice in his career. This is where Paz into that range with Ray Jones at ringside watching on. He has been out punched and outscored. Good. Crunching low to the body and then over the top. Yeah, and Pazienza now ripping away the shots. Upstairs, downstairs. Oh. You can't hurt me. Benny Pazienza. Straight right. Yep. Punching at will. Every shot that Pazienza throws hits the mark. 21 world title fights. Oh. Good left hook. Oh. It was Duran. Oh, connecting upstairs is. Good luck now is stirring as we work down the final second. And Pazienza is very upset. And he has hurt the hand. The only pain Paz left the ring with was from punching Duran too much in the head. The fight was a whitewash and a mismatch. But Paz felt he needed to silence Duran once and for all. I, you know, I, I wanted, wanted to congratulate him after the fight. fight. You know, I mean, this might be his last fight. It's a sad day for boxing. You know, I respect the guy. He just said a lot of things about me that I don't think he should have said. Now he's going to take up, he should, you know, he should go try and take up golf or something like that. It was a dominant two-fight performance for Pazienza, but in all truth, Duran wasn't the best preparation to build toward a world title fight, as the main man at 168, Roy Jones Jr., gave Vinny a title shot five months later, where he went on to win one of the most one-sided title fights of his entire career, which is saying a lot considering this is the great Roy Jones we're talking about. Ten seconds to go, round number six. Jones says, come on, Vinny, let's go on a date. That's going to be it. I think 29, that's over. Pazienza trying to say he's all right. Paz battled hard to regain a championship belt for the remaining of the 90s heading into the 2000s, but was never able to produce his best work when the big occasions came around. And against an opponent like Roy, you know, you can't, you cannot be not at your best, and I wasn't at my best. Everyone thought Duran was washed up after the Paz fight, and to be honest, he was. But yet, the old warrior somehow kept battling away for another six years. That, in the end, saw the Panamanian legend be one of just three boxers in history to compete in five different decades. Astounding. Uh, when somebody says Roberto Duran to me, uh, the first thing I think about, you know, is really a legend. A legend, you know what I'm saying? Because Roberto Duran was something that you don't find in everyday boxing. I mean, his day and what he did, he was the best. Duran is one of the biggest boxing badasses of all time, a bona fide legend of the sport. It's a shame that the first fight I had to cover him in on this channel was when he was at the tail end of things, so I'll make a promise to cover some of his iconic battles from his prime years down the line. Until next time, this is BLTV signing off.